Hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Its energy density is surpassed only by nuclear fuel and its only emissions are water vapors. We've been hearing this for quite a while, but hydrogen hasn't really lived up to the hype just yet. And it's because it has some major challenges to overcome, but there may finally be some amazing breakthroughs happening that can finally take hydrogen from a pie in the sky idea to actually changing the landscape of energy on this planet. Let's figure this all out together. I'm Ricky and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is sponsored by 3M. Hydrogen, by all measures, sounds like an absolute no-brainer for the future of fuel. To replace coal, natural gas, and oil for everything from electric vehicles to energy storage to airplanes, ships, and industrial applications like steel production. This is for good reason, because hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. Well, that's true, but it's tricky. We'll get back to that here in just a minute. Now, we've covered hydrogen before on this channel, links in the description. So we won't go too deep into the pros and cons here, but hydrogen has plenty going for it. After nuclear energy, hydrogen has the highest specific energy density of any known fuel, packing 33.3 kilowatt hours per kilogram, which is three times more punch in the same amount of mass as the best fossil fuels. But before you get too excited, when you talk about the challenges, in the United States, there are only around 40 public hydrogen charging stations compared to over 168,000 gasoline stations. The cost of installing a hydrogen fueling station is really high and the demand is really low. So it's a risky investment and one not many are willing to take just yet. Some of the key challenges are one, hydrogen production two, distribution, and three, it's overall efficiency. I'm gonna focus on the production side of the equation in this video. Remember when I said hydrogen is the universe's most abundant element? Well, yes, that is true. But hydrogen is so light that it really readily escapes the atmosphere and floats off into space. So the hydrogen that we actually have on Earth is bonded to other compounds like water, and separating hydrogen isn't easy. For this reason, most of the hydrogen we have today actually comes from steam, methane reforming of natural gas doesn't exactly sound like the fuel of the future does it so hydrogen only makes sense if we can produce it in a clean way and that has led us to another problem there are a lot of ways to split water into hydrogen and oxygen but one of the most promising ways is by using a proton exchange membrane or pem to make this work requires catalysts to drive the necessary chemical reactions Here's a quick breakdown of how a PEM electrolyzer works. It looks a bit like a battery or fuel cell with an anode cathode, a proton exchange membrane, and a solid polymer electrolyte that conducts protons but insulates the electrodes electrically. When electricity is provided via solar panels or wind turbines, in the case of green hydrogen, two reactions occur. On the anode side, the half reaction that takes place is called the oxygen evolution reaction. Here the liquid water is oxidized to oxygen, protons, and electrons in the presence of a catalyst. And the best performing and long lasting catalyst is iridium oxide. We'll get back to that in just a bit. The half reaction taking place on the cathode side is the hydrogen evolution reaction. Here the supplied electrons and the protons that pass pass through the membrane are combined to create gaseous hydrogen. The problem lies in the fact that iridium is one of the rarest elements on Earth. Here's a list of the abundance of chemical elements in the Earth's crust. Pay close attention to lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt, elements used in lithium ion batteries. Based on data from web elements, lithium makes up 17 parts per million, nickel 90, manganese 1100, and cobalt 30. But iridium is all the way at the bottom at 0 0.0004 parts per million, making one of the rarest elements on Earth. But before we get into that, let me tell you about our sponsor this week, 3M. 3M Forward is a new program that highlights how material science-based innovations at scale can help society progress amid three unstoppable forces shaping our planet, climate change and resource scarcity, shifting demographics and social change, and convergence of the physical and digital worlds. These forces are known as megatrends. Through the lens of climate change and resource scarcity, 3M is helping to spotlight how hydrogen could be the fuel of the future. To learn more about 3M, check out some of the links down below. They're working on all sorts of problems that are gonna completely change the world. Huge thanks to 3M and you for supporting the show. 
I have learned so much about iridium in the research of this video. So it's fun facts time. Let's talk iridium. First of all, it's incredibly dense, along with osmium, the two densest metals on earth, denser than gold or platinum. This combined with its tendency to bond with iron has led scientists to believe that most of the iridium on earth sank into the molten core in the early formation of earth. Iridium is found in meteorites at a much higher concentration than in the earth's crust. When the clay layer at the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary displayed a high concentration of iridium, it led to the Alvarez hypothesis that the extinction of the dinosaur 66 million years ago was caused by the impact of massive extraterrestrial objects. This hypothesis was later confirmed by the discovery of the Chicxulub crater off the coast of Mexico. So iridium, its scarcity and abundance in one layer of the Earth's crust led to the eventual hypothesis of what wiped out the dinosaurs. How cool is that? Iridium predominantly comes from as, as a mining byproduct of platinum in South Africa. So it's generally believed that the supply, you know, the amount that's entering the market every year is, is pretty much fixed at about seven and a half tons per year. This graphic from the Visual Capitalist really helps put it in perspective. But it's not just rare, it's expensive too. According to Umicore, as of May 2023, iridium prices are $162,242 per kilogram, compared to $62,586 for gold. This matters because the US Department of Energy in 2021 launched its first ever Earthshot initiative on hydrogen to spur innovation, investment, and research. Its goal can be summarized by 111, to bring down prices 80% to just $1 per kilogram in one decade. This is a really ambitious goal, but it's neither crazy or new. We've seen what large scale innovation and investment in lithium ion batteries, for example, have done. What if we could get the benefits of iridium as a PEM catalyst for hydrogen production while reducing how much of it we actually need it? Enter the nanostructure supported iridium catalyst powder, a breakthrough in material science that allows us to use vastly less iridium. So this is a, an example of the catalyst powder itself. It, it's a fine black powder and this jar contains about 10 grams of, of the catalyst. It's really pretty small. Um, if you look under it, look at it under a really high resolution microscope, you can see that each of the particles are actually rod shaped and about a thousand times smaller than the size of a human hair. This iridium catalyst powder increases the surface area of the iridium, allowing it to perform as a catalyst while needing significantly less. So those simple laboratory backyard electrolyzers that you might do in science class, the principles overall are the same. You have two electrodes across some water you apply a voltage across it, it'll split the water. The The real challenge with that sort of level of technology is a couple fold. One is the efficiency of the device is not very good. Where the catalyst comes into play is it really boosts the efficiency up to the point that it can be economically interesting. The other point is um, you know, the, the lifetime and durability. Those simple electrodes that you're referring to would probably only last a period of a few hours. Whereas in real applications, the catalyst and these electrodes need to last on the order of 10 years. A 2021 report by Morgan Stanley expects global electrolyzer capacities to increase to 150 gigawatts by 2030 and 1400 gigawatts by 2050 from just 0.3 gigawatts in 2020. The bottom line is this, hydrogen truly is one of the most puzzling energy sources I've ever come across. Yet it's filled with so much potential. Thanks to breakthroughs from companies like 3M, might this be the turning point for hydrogen? Everyone said EVs were impossible because we could never make enough batteries until companies like Tesla just started making their own batteries and doing just that. Over the course of a year, this 10 grams of catalyst can produce over 10 tons of hydrogen per year. And 10 tons of hydrogen is enough to drive a fuel cell car, for example, for 600,000 miles. Also, and probably uh, even more importantly, is its ability to impact climate. Typically, hydrogen today is produced through the reforming of hydrocarbons like natural gas, and you emit a lot of carbon dioxide in that process. That 10 tons of hydrogen that were produced um, was produced by water electrolysis rather than uh, through reforming of natural gas, you'd save about 100 tons of CO2 emissions every year. Could this be the very moment for hydrogen? We've seen it before. When the stars align and mining and raw material production, manufacturing innovations and optimizations, and when the supply and demand curves cross, amazing things can happen. Just look at solar panels. Here's a graph showing how prices have fallen as manufacturing and capacity have increased. And here's a graph showing falling prices for lithium ion batteries in just a decade. With breakthroughs like 3M's nanostructure supported iridium catalyst powder reducing the need for iridium by a factor of 10 and other electrolyzer breakthroughs, 
The moonshot hydrogen goal of $1 per kilogram in a decade kind of seems within reach. By the way, at $1 per kilogram and factoring in fuel cell efficiency of just 60%, you'd be paying five cents per kilowatt hour for hydrogen, three times cheaper than the average price for DC fast charging with an electric car. But I think the real future for hydrogen isn't in passenger cars, but in heavy industries like steel production, large cargo ships, and commercial aviation. In the case of hydrogen, the challenges have always been around production, doing so in a clean and sustainable way, and this might be one of the most exciting things I've seen that could make that moonshot goal of a dollar per kilogram actually possible. But what do you think? What does the future of hydrogen look like? What other innovations are needed? Sound off in the comments below. And if you thought that was a cool idea on hydrogen, you gotta check out this video next.